Hey everybody, it's Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. How are you guys today? I am excited to be with you. I am bringing you another project with the Brave Vikings stamp set. Um, it is in our mini catalog that goes through um, the end of June and it is on page 73. This is the stamp set right here. Isn't it adorable? I really love it. And I've paired it today with Biggest Wish. That's in our annual catalog. And it is a really cool stamp set that has these awesome sentiments. I do use it quite often. And I thought since these were kind of small, I wanted to have something really bold for my banner for this particular project. So what is this, do you ask? It is a triangle box. I'm going to show you the side. And this is a belly band that's on here. It slides off all the way. So once the recipient gets their treat out of the inside, which happens to be a Toblerone candy bar, this is a dark chocolate with the honey and almond nougat. Um, they can, this comes completely out of there, so they can put it back together and have this really cool little um, token to celebrate their birthday. And I think it's a, rate, a great little um, box. I had a really fun time making it to fit um, the Toblerone candy bar. I had to measure. I used some, sorry guys, I used some scrap paper. Let's try the other side. Um, I did try to make this so that it would fit easily in and out. For some reason, it's giving me a hard time um, going back in now. I didn't have any problem earlier, but of course, I'm on camera. There we go. <laughs> and because I'm on camera, there's always issues. But this is real TV, and that's just how it is. <laughs> Nothing I can do about it. Um, anyway, you can see it does slide over. It was just that I was not um, getting this flap down enough, I think, flat enough to slide it in there. But it does slide in and out. And you want to make sure that you don't make it too tight so that it can slide in and out. And then they can just put the box together once they've taken their candy bar out of it. And you have this adorable little um, birthday treat that you can put out for different, you know, for birthdays year after year. So it's a really fun project and I'm gonna show you how to make it. We have another Toblerone candy bar here that we're gonna use. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just gonna move it out of the camera temporarily so that I can bring in my scoreboard because that is what we will be using to make our box. And we're gonna start with that first. So I need my Simply scoreboard. So let me move these inks out of the way here. And hopefully I think I am in camera. So the piece of um, cardstock that I'm using, this is a piece of our new cardstock. It's one of our in colors and it's called Sweet Sorbet. It's really pretty. You can also use Poppy Parade if you don't have the Sweet Sorbet. I picked it because I thought it went really well with the color of the candy bar. But you can pick any color that you want for your treat box. So this, piece measures five and a half by 11 inches. Okay, so we're going to do some markings. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to grab my, and on the short side, we're going to do um, at the half, I'm sorry, on the short side, sorry, I have to put it with the short side up the top. We're going to do a half inch score mark. So we're going to go all the way down the half inch all the way down to 11. I'm sure I'm out of camera. I don't think I have 11 inches worth of space here in the camera. And then the next mark is at two inches. So half inch, two inches, three and a half inches, and then five inches. So again, half inch, two inch, three and a half and five down the short side. On the long side, we have two measurements, one and three eighths. So each of these tick marks is an eighth. So we're gonna count, here's the one, and we're gonna count one, two, three. So one and three eighths. And then the one on this side is nine and five eighths. So we're gonna count nine, and then we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, nine and five eighths. And those are the two score marks on the long side. So let's get the board out of the way and I'm going to burnish on all my marks. And once I've done that, you'll be able to see them a little better. 
So I'm gonna actually fold all of the cardstock using my bone folder on all of these score marks. Got one more down the long side because we did half inch, two, three and a half, and five. So those are the four score marks. And then we have two score marks on the long end. We have the one and three eighths. And then we have the nine and five eighths. So once I've done the scoring here, you can see the marks a lot better, okay? So we have each of these corners has this little like narrow rectangle and then there's three squares and then there's another narrow rectangle and then you have this long piece and another long piece right here. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna get rid of all four of these rectangles. We don't need those and I like to use a thick bladed scissor. So this is a thick bladed scissor. I don't wanna use my paper stamps because they are too thin. And I like to use a thick blade because it really helps to get that score piece cut off when you're doing your trimming. Um, whereas the thin blade, it's a lot harder to cut that off, which is why I use um, just a thick bladed scissor. This particular scissor happened to come from Ikea, but you can use any scissor that you have that has a thicker blade, not one of our nice, pretty, um, uh, paper stamps. So let's go ahead and get this last one off. Oh my gosh, I can't get my hand in place here. Here we go. All right. So we're going to go there and here and we'll remove that corner. So now this is what you have. Those four are removed. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to corner round these flaps. And I forgot to mark here, but you want to find your center of this middle piece here. So I'm going to just grab my little ruler. I'm going to place it down and it's one and a half inches. So three quarters of an inch is the center. And I'm just going to use my pencil and I'm just going to mark the three quarter inch mark right there. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna find the three quarter inch and I'm gonna mark it right on the tip. And the reason I wanna do that is I want to use my stylus again and I want to do a triangle on that corner. Remember the sides of our Toblerone are triangular. So this is the end of the box that needs to fit that. So I'm gonna to go to that pencil mark and then this score mark here and I'm gonna just run my stylus from that pencil mark to the corner like so. So see how that forms a nice triangle there for our Toblerone box. We're going to do the same thing over here. So we're going to come from that pencil mark at the halfway and we're going to give it a nice score and let's do the other corner from that pencil mark to the corner. And there's my second one. So what I wanna do here is I wanna just burnish along that as well. So I'm just gonna kind of form that triangle. Same thing on the other side. All right, I can erase those pencil marks now that I've marked it. All right. All right, so now we're gonna round those corners and we no longer have a corner rounder. So if you have the Cropodile corner rounder, you can use it. I have the old um, detailed trio punch that used to have a corner on it. I also have the Cropodile one, but I'm gonna go ahead and round these corners. So I'm just gonna put that in where these um, pieces meet because I want to round these little thin sections. That's why I folded that piece back so that I could get it in my corner rounder. So there's that one. Let's fold this one back and then I want to get this corner. Let's put it in, lay it flat, push it in and do the last one. Okay. 
but most people have a corner rounder. So just round your corners on those smaller um, flaps. They're the thin, long pieces. See right here? That's what we want to round. It just makes it a lot easier when it slips into the box. And you'll see um, what I'm doing. So now we're going to do one more cut. Now, right where that corner round is, we're going to cut straight up to that point where that triangle is. So I'm just going to cut straight in right here. And I'm going to kind of miter it a little bit. So I'm going to come straight on that seam right to the end. And then I'm going to miter this corner. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to come straight up to the end right till it meets that first score mark. And then I'm going to miter this corner, flip it around, do the same thing, come straight up, miter this corner, and then straight up. And miter this corner. All right. Now this is gonna form our triangle box. See, this flap is gonna tuck in and this one's gonna flip. See, there's my triangle. So these flaps need to be glued inside to position this corner, these corners to become triangles. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. Now, this flap is the one that's gonna tuck in and then this one is gonna come over the top of it. So because it's gonna tuck in, I'm gonna find my center let me grab a big ruler. That little one won't work. And so this is eight and a quarter inches. So we're going to go four and an eighth. Okay, so I'm going to mark, put a pencil mark on the four and an eighth right here. That tells me where I want my circle to be cut. I'm going to grab a half inch circle punch. If you don't own one, you can purchase one from Amazon or anywhere that you have one. But Stampin' Up! used to sell a half inch circle punch. We no longer do. It was retired. And you want to make sure that this is folded when you do this. And you want to insert that circle so that it's half, you know, in the halfway portion of the circle and you want to get a half circle cut out so you want to put it halfway into the punch and then that that piece is centered there in the circle you're just gonna do a little and then when you open it see how you have a little circle there but what that's gonna do is it's gonna help you to have a place to grab your candy bar so when this is closed you have somewhere to pull on so that half inch circle does help. You don't, it's not absolutely necessary, but I do like to use it. So now we're gonna go ahead and bring our sides of our box in. So these are gonna come in like this. They're gonna get glued to the long sides and then this is gonna tuck in and then that's gonna come around. So let's do one at a time. I'm gonna use my wet adhesive. I like to use the wet adhesive. It gives me a little wiggle room. I want to make sure it's right up on that crease there because that's where I really need it to bond because that's where it's going to form my squared end. Okay, so I'm going to hold it so that this is straight on that crease. And then I'm going to press down on the inside. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to make sure I'm right on that crease. And then I'm going to tuck that in. I'm having some allergies today. Of course, this is the day that I'm recording, but sometimes you don't have any choice. You just have to do what you have to do. So I'm just wiping off that extra glue that's oozing out there. And I really want to make sure that it's nice and adhered on that end. And then I'm going to press on the inside, push my finger and press down on that whole flap. We'll do the same thing here. Make sure that we have on that edge. Like I said, especially on that seam edge right there, you wanna make sure that you have plenty of adhesive. If it oozes out a little, that's okay. You just wipe it off. And then again, line that edge up right there. Press it down and then you can push that tab on the inside and then we're gonna do the very last one. Make sure I have some on that edge of where the seam is. I'm gonna tuck that in. I'm gonna make sure it's straight on this edge here. Hold it 
until it grips and then I'm going to lay it down and I'm going to press the rest of that tab along the box. I will show you in a second here. All right, so this is our box. Here's our circle. This is the front, okay? These sides are going to tuck in. We're going to push this part out. We're going to, when, when the candy bar's in there, we're going to put a little crease in this corner and a little crease in this corner. I'll show you. And same thing, we're going to put a little crease in this corner by pushing that triangle out. And we're going to give it a little crease kind of in the middle there and it'll form perfect, you'll see. So we're gonna put our, go, go ahead and put our candy bar in. This is the back side. Remember this front is where the little circle is. So you wanna put your candy bar inside, just like that. Now, now that you have the candy bar in there and the triangle is already in place, it's easy to kind of run your nail right in this corner and just press and make sure that it folds right along that edge. And then I like to use my bone folder with the candy bar in there and just give it a nice crease. Okay, now I'm gonna do the other side. I'm just gonna make sure that my triangle is right against my candy bar and then I put a little crease on that side. Again, I'm gonna lay it flat. I'm gonna use my bone folder to give it a nice crease on that side. You see how you have that extra little flap on each side? We're gonna do the same thing on this side. So we're gonna press the candy bar. I'm gonna run my finger down here, make sure that that corner is tucked and that it's pressed against. And once I have it in there and pressed against, I'm gonna run my bone folder right along my candy bar. It helps to give a really nice crease. And let's do the last one. We're gonna tuck our nail in there. I mean, and you can see I don't have long nails. You just wanna kinda stick it right just so it has a guide, something to collapse against. And then you're gonna use your candy bar. It's nice and firm in there, that box of the Toblerone. And then that gives you that triangle on the side. So now we have all of our creases. Remember, the circle is the front. I can move that out of the way. Now we're gonna fold this. I'm gonna turn this back so you guys can see. That little pocket right there, this piece is gonna get tucked in, which is why I wanted to corner around those edges so that it would slip in very easily, right into that corner. And then this piece is gonna come down over the top and you can just hold on to it and make sure that you have a nice crisp edge by either running the bone folder on the edge, like so, okay? So I'm gonna set that off to the side. Now, this is our piece of designer series paper. It's from the Tea Boutique. I wanted to have a stripe, kind of like a flag of the, the Viking ships. You know, they always have those striped flags. And so I thought that this perfect, this yellow um, stripe was perfect out of the Tea Boutique. I've trimmed it down to five and a half by six inches. So it's five and a half this way. I mean, this way, the long of the stripe and then it has the full length of this direction so that the stripes go up and down. You want the six inch length if you have a directional pattern like I do. The six inch length is what you want along your actual piece of um, cardstock. You only need five and a half to wrap it around. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna hold this in place and I'm gonna start with the back. I'm gonna lay this flap down and then this is the back, the bottom of our candy bar holder. And I'm gonna start my designer series paper there. And I'm just gonna give it a crease right along that piece. Now, remember, you don't wanna wrap it too tight because you'll have the problem of slipping it in. So when you get to your top, don't make it such a tight crease. Just give it a little bit of extra room and then you're gonna come down here and then you're just gonna line this up again. You don't want it to be quite such a tight crease so that you have a little bit more room. And once you have it in place, your little stripe should line up. And what you wanna do is open this up. You're gonna put a line of wet glue along that section there where the stripes are. So I'm just gonna hold it up against this piece of the candy bar, this red wrapper, 
Okay, so I'm gonna put a line there. And then I'm gonna put a line of glue on the inside where the flower section is on that. That's gonna make it stick here and that's gonna make it stick in. So it's gonna have plenty to hold on to and you can just line up your stripes and press them into place. Remember, this is the bottom of your candy bar, so no one's gonna see this one. It's gonna sit down onto the table. So just make sure, I like to use my bone folder, and press it and make sure that you have a nice crease. All right, so here is the front. So now you have your belly band ready to, let's take it on and off and see how we do. So far, so good. Make sure that that corner is tucked first. So yeah, this one's perfect. So it is your band to go, to hold your box in place to keep it from opening. Let's bring the um, original one done. So I have these two pieces of wood. And what I did was I purchased at the Dollar Tree, they have um, skewers. This is the perfect time of the year to find them because everyone's barbecuing. And I just used an old ratty scissor and I'm gonna cut this point off. Okay. So that way it doesn't stick anybody. So I'm just gonna cut that off, that goes into the trash. Now, I wanted my banner to be kind of tall. And so I decided five inches was the right length, but I think it's just a tiny bit too tall. So I'm actually gonna take an inch off and I'm gonna make them four inches this time. So what I wanna do is take my little um, ruler in here. I'm gonna mark four inches and then I'm gonna cut right at that point. And I'm gonna just hold this against that skewer and cut again. Okay, so there are my two pieces that I need. And I have another piece of the sweet sorbet. And this piece, I don't think I wrote this one down is six inches by one and a half. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna use my paper snips and I am just going to do just kind of a rolling banner type. I'm gonna bring it up and then I'm gonna bring it back and then I'm gonna bring it up again. All right, and then I'm gonna um, follow that same thing on this end. So I'm gonna try and follow the same path as best I can. I'm gonna dip, then I'm gonna roll it up. You can see I'm following along what I did here. Then I'm gonna dip it down. And then I'm gonna bring it back up when we get to this end here and do the best I can. You know, it's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, these this piece is left is my my bannered piece from here. So now I'm gonna do these flagged ends. So I'm just gonna bring my banner piece in, and then I'm gonna come from this end and bring it to meet that one. So there's that one, okay? Then I'm gonna do this side. I'm gonna bring this banner piece in, and then bring this one to meet it, and there's that one. So this forms my little banner that I'm doing. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna attach it to my poles, like so. Bring it up so you guys can see it a little better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bring my silicone mat out. I'm gonna put my little poles on here. Make sure where I'm, uh, where I'm gluing it. I'm gonna get my wet adhesive and I'm gonna put some on the skewer And then I'm gonna make sure that my skewer is upright. So we'll start with this one. I'm gonna hold it in place for a second. And then I'm gonna turn this one so that the glue is upright. And I'm gonna hold that one in place for a second. And I wanna make sure that they're the same distance. So if I grab a, a ruler here, I'm just gonna slide this one up a hair. so that it matches that one. There we go. And I'm just gonna hold that in place and let that start to dry. Now, let's talk about our little Vikings. 
So I used some scraps of basic white cardstock and with my Memento ink pad, I stamped my ship, my boy and my girl Viking and then I colored them in with my Stampin' Blends that you see here. So for the flag, I used the Cherry Cobbler Stampin' Blend Dark, and I varied, and I left one white, and I did through here. For the ship itself, I used the bronze. When you buy the bronze, you get the ivory, but we're not using the ivory today, so we used the bronze, and then I went back and I did the lines of the ship. I went over the top of them. For the water, I chose to use our Starry Sky, which is our new in color, and it comes in a blend. And then for these round circle pieces and the paddles, I used Dark Crumb Cake. So those are the colors that I used for the ship. For my girl Viking, I did her hair with Soft Saffron, So Saffron in the light. Sorry, I'm using, moving my banner and I want that to grab. So I used the light So Saffron for her hair and then I highlighted it with pumpkin pie to give her kind of a strawberry blonde colored hair. I used dark crumb cake for her little dress, bronze for her feet, bronze for her little pouch and that little sash, and bronze for the spear handle. For her skin tone, I used our natural blends, Stampin' Blends, and this one is number 900. They go from 100 to 1,000, we have 10 of them, and they're all different um, natural tones. So I wanted her to have a lighter color. So a thousand is the very palest and I went one shade darker for 900. And then I used light and dark gray granite to do her hat and her spear. I used the light on the spear and her hat top and those little circles. And then the band I did in the dark gray granite and also this section of her spear. And I highlighted that artist line there with the dark gray granite. On these little beads that are on her sash, I also used the dark, um, the bronze for that. So that's how she was done. Our guy Viking was done with pumpkin pie light all over for his beard and his eyebrows and his mustache. And then I used the dark pumpkin pie to accent all of the artist's marks on those to give him a two-tone colored beard. His boots and his pants are bronze. And also the sash on the inside here under his beard is bronze. His vest is dark crumb cake. And also this sash portion at the bottom of his shirt under the vest is dark crumb cake. And then I highlighted with the dark, with the bronze over this artist marks. I also used the bronze for the handle of his sword. I used the light crumb cake for the horns. And for his face, I used the same 900 of the Natural Tones blends. And then for his shield, his knife, and for his helmet, I used the dark and light gray granite. You can see the lighter and the dark portions. And then for his sword, I used all light gray granite, and I just highlighted the artist marks with the dark. So those are the colors for him. For the happy birthday, I told you that I used our Biggest Wish stamp set at the beginning of this video. So I used the birthday and the happy from that. And I used the same color blend that I used for the water. I used Starry Sky. I went ahead and cut that out. And that's what we're going to attach to our banner. So we are going to put dimensionals while we're waiting for this to dry on the backs of these three pieces. So let's go ahead and pull my dimensionals out. I'm gonna use a lot of minis on these words because I have some cuts in between the different pieces and I definitely want the dimensionals to fit on there. So we're gonna use a lot of the mini dimensionals. We'll fill in with some big ones if we can. Let's see, we'll put one of these up here. All right, and then we're gonna use some of the larger dimensionals for these portions here. Maybe another one down here. Now these skinnier parts, if you can see, as you're getting rid of all your mini dimensionals, you're using them, you're left with this border. And so I save those and I have a bunch of them cut into small pieces here. I'm gonna use those for the thin parts of my words here. I'm just gonna stick those in the sections that have just that thin section of the, the lines here from the words. I'm just gonna fill those in. 
So I like using those edges and it's nice because you can use up all of these little um, edges without having them, you know, go to waste. So they work out, I think, quite well. There's that one and let's do this part of the eye. Keep sticking it to myself. Let's put this small one here. I need another one. Let's cut. I think I'm out of cutting them. I need to cut a couple more. Let's use that one right here. All right. So that's the happy birthday. For the spear, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna need some of those thinner pieces. So let's put one here on the spear. Let's do another one. on this bottom section of the spear. It's kind of thin. We're gonna do his sword. That will need a long, thin piece. So let's go ahead and put one of these on here. And his horns will also need um, two of those thin pieces, don't you think? So we'll put one on each of these little horns. Those are kind of skinny and hard to um, put a dimensional in there. So we will use these thinner pieces here. All right. And then I think I can use a large on his sword and one on his face here. One maybe down here in the middle. And then I'm gonna use two minis for his feet. And that should be good for him. Let's start our girl. We'll put two on her feet also. I like these minis because they do fit in good spots, right? So let's put one here on her arm. We'll put one on her other arm. Actually, I'm going to use a skinny piece there. I'm going to put that on her pouch. We'll use the large on her head. We'll put one a little farther down here and maybe one in the middle. I'm gonna use one of those skinny pieces again. I'm gonna cut one of those. I like to cut a few of them at the same time. Makes it easy when you wanna pull one up, you don't have to cut it. I'll use that for her arm there. All right, so now we have to do our boat. So let me grab some more dimensionals. I need to get another one. I think I finished all the large ones. So let's grab another one here, another. So we'll do one on the sail. One there, one in the middle. One on this end, and then we'll use some of the minis. I think one will fit on the head of that ship. And we'll put one on this end here by the water, and one on this end. And then I wanna use, I think, some of the skinny pieces. I think I'm gonna put too many ones there, one there and one here, it's kind of in between. So let's use some of those skinny pieces that I cut. So we'll put one here by the throat of the, we'll put one here on the mast of the ship here. Whoops, I think the backing came off of that one and it's, let's see if I can use my take your pick tool to move that out. There we go. And then we'll put one here on the tail. That looks pretty good. All right, so I think that's enough of the dimensionals. So let's go ahead and start. Um, pulling them off. We'll start with the happy birthday because that's pretty much ready to be glued, I think. So we'll put pull all of these guys off. I like to use my take your pick tool to remove these because it helps to really um, pull the backs off and they don't end up all over your floor. They stick to the take your pick tool. There's my happy. I'm gonna put that one on this side here. And then let's remove these. That 
that one's stuck. Sometimes when you use these skinny ones, they're not as easy to remove with the take your pick tool, but I always like to pick them back up after I'm done with the larger ones. There's the birthday, so we'll put that over here. Isn't this a nice um, gift that you could give to a coworker? You could make them this for um, their birthday and when they come in, you could have it on their desk. I think it's fun. Let's take these off of my boy Viking, get him ready to be attached onto, oh, sticking to me. And let's remove off of our girl Viking. I like to put plenty of these dimensionals on there because you definitely want them to hold and adhere. So especially if you're gonna save this to use year after year and just display it once you've removed your candy bar from it, right? You need to make sure, let me see if this backing, there is a backing on that one. All right, and then we have our ship. Let's get those off. And by this point, I think our, our um, skewer pieces should be adhered nicely to our um, paper onto our cardstock. I have one more piece. I think I got them all now. Sometimes I can't see the backings and I have to touch them with my finger to make sure that I have um, removed them all. All right. So let's bring our candy bar, bar back into the picture. Our um, skewers are attached nicely to the back of our banner and we're gonna attach this onto our candy bar. So again, I'm gonna use my wet adhesive. I'm gonna run that on the back of these skewers. And you can see how well it held up. So we're gonna put it in place. I'm gonna bring my mat in just in case. We're gonna place that down and just hold it for a second, get it to adhere. There it goes. It's grabbing. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to stick our little boat in the middle, right near the bottom, just like that. We're going to put our Viking boy kind of over the top of our skewer and all of our little pieces here will help to hold him into place and we'll put our girl also near our skewer let me get her spear attached and there is our candy bar didn't it turn out super awesome i love it it will set more the glue that has been adhered to the front as it just sits around and dries just like the other one did i hope that you guys enjoyed this project it certainly is a fun project to do i hope you enjoyed the box i was thrilled when i made it that i could get it to fit so well over this candy bar um Triangle boxes are always a challenge for me, but I do like to try and make them. I think it turned out super awesome, and I hope that you guys love it. Thanks for sticking with me. If this is a project that you would like to do, definitely um, save my video to your Pinterest. So what you wanna do is you wanna hit the share button and then share it to your Pinterest, stick it on a board, and then next time you wanna make this, you'll be able to find it in your Pinterest really easy. So um, you can also give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. If you would like to leave me a comment, let me know what you think of this project. And also, if you have any ideas of things that you'd like for me to make, I would certainly love to know what you want like me to do. Um, definitely inspires me to try new things. And I appreciate you guys watching. If you stuck to the end, I'm so grateful to have you here. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Happy stamping!